Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Our top story: A Chinese student is facing the music after allegedly flying a drone to photograph a U.S. Navy shipyard. One that builds classified nuclear submarines was Beijing behind the flight mission. President Biden is casting his latest foreign policy comments toward China just five months before Americans head to the polls. The Philippines is accusing the Chinese Coast Guard of taking an airdrop food package from the island's navy and dumping it into the ocean. Details on the salvage operation. And over in New York City, slogans like "Stand Strong with Taiwan" and "A Beacon of Democracy" are lighting up a landmark billboard in Times Square. Hundreds of overseas Taiwanese people gathered on the scene as Beijing keeps up its threats against democracy on the island. Photos of a U.S. Navy shipyard found inside a Chinese student's drone. The shipyard builds highly classified nuclear submarines. The Justice Department charged the student for taking photos of the shipyard with a drone this January. This case was reported for the first time just recently by the Wired magazine. Feng Yunxi is a student at the University of Minnesota. Court documents said he traveled from Minnesota to Virginia this January and allegedly flew a drone at Newport News Shipyard in inclement weather. This shipyard makes highly classified Navy aircraft carriers and nuclear submarines. Xu's drone got stuck in a local resident's tree. He later approached the resident for help. And the neighbor reported him to the police. She is now awaiting trial in Virginia. He could face up to six years in prison. This comes as military bases across the U.S. intercept a growing number of Chinese nationals posing as tourists. This March, a Chinese national was arrested after breaching a Marine Corps base in California. Adam Savitt, director for the China Policy Initiative at AFPI, breaks uh, down the phenomenon. Cases of this, this gate crashing, they're calling it,、uh, where a, a Chinese citizen will show up at the gate of a military base. They pretend to be、uh, tourists in many cases. They're looking for a McDonald's or a Burger King. That's literally happened, and they say, "Oh, I got turned around," you know, and they got stopped at the military、uh, base. Savitt pointed to more sophisticated examples. For example,、uh, some Chinese nationals were found scuba diving off of Cape Canaveral, which, of course,、uh, off the coast of Florida, which is a, a very important space installation, also important to national security. Savitt warned any gap the U.S. leaves in national security is going to be exploited by the Chinese regime, adding the CCP is very good at it. Time magazine published a long interview with President Joe Biden on Tuesday. In it, he discussed Taiwan, China's economy, and alleged Chinese interference in U.S. elections. Biden said he told Chinese leader Xi Jinping that the U.S. will continue not to support Taiwan's independence, but he reassured China that he would not rule out using U.S. military force to defend Taiwan if Beijing decides to invade the island. Biden also described China's economy as on the brink and dismissed the idea of it booming. He pointed out that much of China's population is quote too old to work. He also called Chinese people xenophobic, a term he has used to describe China and others before. What about the Chinese leader's Belt and Road Initiative? Biden commented that the project is a nuisance graveyard initiative. On the trade war front, Biden said his tariff hikes against China are just tit for tat in response to Beijing's policy that foreign firms operating in China must hand over 51 percent ownership to a Chinese partner company. Biden also confirmed that there is evidence of ongoing Chinese meddling in the upcoming U.S. election. To delve deeper into President Biden's interview with Time Magazine, we spoke to General Robert Spaulding, retired U.S. Air Force Brigadier General and author of *War Without Rules*. General Spaulding, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. Thanks. Great to be back.
Now, back to Biden's interview with Time on the economic front. Biden noted that China's population isn't doing great, saying, quote, you've got a population that's considerably older than the vast majority of the youth in Europe that is too old to work, adding, where is it going to grow? You've got an economy that's on the brink there. The idea that their economy is booming, give me a break. Now, how do you see that this impacting how the U.S. does business with China? Could we see Wall Street investing less or not? I think we've already seen Wall Street investing less. Um, we're going to basically have two economies, one that's kind of led by China. It's going to feature a lot of the countries in the Belt and Road Initiative, a lot of their proxies like Russia, North Korea and Iran. Um, it's going to rely heavily on the Chinese supply chain, but also they'll have natural resources like energy from Iran and Russia and other uh, materials from other members of the Belt and Road Initiative. So, um, and then you're going to have the, the free world economies. This is the way the world is shaping up now. I think the question remains is, are these uh, two economic systems going to also be at war with each other? Certainly there's a Cold War does that turn into a hot war? We, I definitely believe that there's going to be one over Taiwan. Uh, I think we have to get uh, prepared for it because the Chinese are already preparing their society, their economy, certainly the Belt and Road Initiative and associated countries for that eventuality. Now, this is an election year, and the topic of election meddling by China came up in the interview. President Biden saying that there is evidence that meddling is going on, adding that everybody, all the bad guys are rooting for Trump. Man, not a joke. How do you see this impacting U.S.-China relations? The, the, the Chinese Communist Party and the Russians and the North Koreans and the Iranians are influencing everywhere. And to the extent that they have the more resources, the Chinese are influencing in the United States a lot more. And I would say that their primary goal is to sow dissent and to essentially get people to believe that the democratic process is not the right process to have. What you really want is a single party in power, which you know, for all intents and purposes, a lot of times here in Washington, D.C., it looks like that. What America, that's what America already has. I don't think the Chinese Communist Party necessarily wants to see President Trump win, given the fact that he's the one that started the tariffs and created a lot of the problems uh, between the U.S. and China the first time around. And I think the second time around is probably going to be a lot worse. General Spaulding, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. China hits out at Western Consulate officials Tuesday. That's over them visiting Victoria Park in Hong Kong on the 35th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. On June 4, 1989, Beijing sent in tanks and opened fire on unarmed student protesters asking for democracy. It is unclear how many died that night. Western sources say it could range from hundreds to tens of thousands. Victoria Park used to be a landmark used for vigils commemorating the massacre. At least five Western diplomats went there Tuesday, including a European Union office's deputy head, a German council general, and a Dutch council general. Security was tight. The diplomats were surrounded by police. Beijing accused the envoys of, quote, staging political dramas. Well, any Hong Kongers that show up there could risk being taken away by police. The U.S. consulate in Hong Kong lied its office windows with candles to mark the anniversary of the historic event. Turning now to the South China Sea, on Tuesday, the Philippines military said Chinese Coast Guard troops intercepted an airdrop of food supplies from the island's navy and dumped the remains into the ocean. The incident happened near the disputed 2nd Thomas Shoal and prompted a salvage operation. Philippine officials say they believe the Chinese troops thought it was a package containing construction materials, earmarked for a warship that ran aground in the area. Footage shows Filipino sailors on motorboats searching for the supply drop's contents. They ended up retrieving some of the food, but the rice inside was no longer edible. Meanwhile, Beijing state media accused the Philippines of cutting Chinese fishing nets in the South China Sea. The regime claims virtually the entire body of water as part of its own territory and has had a number of confrontations with the Philippine Coast Guards. That's despite an international tribunal's ruling that China's claim 
is invalid. The president of Pacific Island nation Palau says he expects the Chinese regime to interfere in his country's November elections. That's because of his administration's view of Taiwan. The nation's president said his support of his country's recognition of Taiwan as a sovereign state made him the enemy in the eyes of the Chinese communist regime. He suggested that Beijing would want to remove him in favor of a candidate that aligns with the regime's views. Well, I think in every election, the Chinese are always involved. Uh, one of the things that we know is that uh, it's the president who ultimately decides who you have diplomatic relations with. And so, obviously, they know where my stance is, you know, and, and really, in Palau, all we want is we want peace on the ta Taiwan Straits. We want to preserve the status quo. And, uh, and we understand our role as uh, being in the westernmost part of the Pacific, allied with the United States, that uh, maintaining peace and security in the region is important for all of us. Palau is one of just 12 nations that still formally recognize Taiwan. Earlier this year, fellow Pacific Island Nuro cut ties with Taipei in favor of Beijing just days after Taiwan's presidential election. The Palau president's comments come after a cyber attack on Palau's government in March. The breach succeeded in stealing over 20,000 documents. He says the hack had links to China and Russia. Over 500 overseas Taiwanese people gathered in Manhattan's Times Square Tuesday evening. The pro-democracy campaign first originated in Taiwan after the island's parliament passed a recent bill. Many Taiwanese people believe the measure could hurt the island's democracy. NTD's Flora Hua brings us more. Here in New York City's Times Square, behind me is one of the most iconic billboards in the world. Now it's playing messages like stand with Taiwan and stand with democracy. The video has been rotating every five minutes for the past 24 hours. The campaign's organizer called the Overseas Bluebird Support Group aims to raise global awareness and support for Taiwan's democracy. Katie Shi is the event's press contact. Our main demand this time is to support democracy in Taiwan. So we hope that in the first stop of our international campaign in Times Square, New York, we can also support democracy in Taiwan and show our determination. Zach is a New York-based attorney. He says he hopes Taiwan's opposition parties listen to what the Taiwanese people are asking for and bring order back to Taiwan's parliament. This time, Taiwan's opposition party forced through laws that violate human rights through the abuse of procedural tactics, which we consider highly inappropriate. The gathering of Taiwanese people at Times Square is to tell the opposition party in Taiwan that we hope they will no longer continue to exchange bills for the benefit of their political parties or personal interests. Through such activities, we advocate to the international community that Taiwan will continue to stand with the allies of freedom and democracy in the future. On the other hand, we also want to thank all our partners in Taiwan who share the same ideals and values. Supporters say the parliament's bill violates Taiwan's constitution, gives lawmakers too much power over the president without checks and balances, and opens the door for Beijing's infiltration. Taiwan's opposition parties hold the majority in parliament and historically favor closer ties to the Chinese regime. I am much more concerned about China's infiltration into our way of life, right? Like, we have so many pro-China, pro pro-CCP lawmakers who openly operate in our parliament. And I think that these people do not have Taiwanese people's best interest in mind. Some Hong Kongers also joined in to show their support. To protect their identities, we distorted their voices. Fight for freedom. Stand with Taiwan. Today is June 4th, the anniversary of the Tiananmen Massacre. We Hong Kongers must stand up to defend all those in Taiwan who love freedom, democracy, equality and justice. Because now China is calling for an invasion of Taiwan daily. So if this happens, all of us, Hong Kong too, may forever be under communist control in the future. Hong Kong supports Taiwan. Flora Hua, NTD News, New York. Coming up, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin visits Cambodia to meet with several senior officials there as concerns grow over China's influence. 
Multi-million dollar mansions and luxury cars on modest salaries. Are China's communist leaders true servants or secret billionaires? We're on a congressional push for an overdue report on the hypocrisy of communism. I believe that there's been a great uh, sensitivity toward upsetting the People's Republic of China's leadership within the CCP. And it's possible that the CCP could have similar information about U.S. policymakers. And memories of an event that shocked the world. Members of Congress speak out against the Chinese regime's continued human rights abuses on the 35th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. More on that after the break here on China in Focus. Welcome back to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. The Pentagon chief is on an Asia trip, and he's looking to reassure Indo-Pacific allies that Washington is committed to countering China. Secretary Lloyd Austin met with Cambodia's prime minister Tuesday. Austin said the visit is for deepening bilateral defense ties. Cambodia is China's closest ally in Southeast Asia. U.S.-Cambodia relations have been frosty for years, in large part because of the country's close ties with Beijing. An especially sore point is China's military presence at a Cambodia Navy base in the Gulf of Thailand. The facility was upgraded with the Chinese regime's assistance. Besides that, Washington has condemned Cambodia for what it described as a poor human rights record, including clampdowns on political dissidents and critics. House Republicans are calling on a top U.S. spy chief for details on corruption in China. That's as experts call for more scrutiny on Beijing's leaders and the fortunes many seem to have amassed. Eleven Congress members, including Andy Ogles of Tennessee, are proposing a new measure. It would give the director of national intelligence three more months to turn in a report on corruption inside the Chinese Communist Party. Under the spy office's microscope are members of the CCP's top bodies. That includes the around 200-member Central Committee, the 25-member Politburo unit, and the seven-member Politburo Standing Committee, the most powerful of them. All are directly headed by Chinese leader Xi Jinping. Congressman Ogles explained that while the Chinese leader and his top cabinet members officially take meager salaries, they enjoy multi-million dollar mansions, luxury vehicles, and personal servants. That's through allegedly funneling wealth to family members and through other means. It could have a, a profound impact on the, the CCP leadership if you could get that information into the hands uh, or the cell phones of, of the Chinese consumers uh, who are already sufficiently disgruntled with the obvious corruption and mismanagement. That's as the Chinese leader pushes what he calls an anti-corruption campaign, which Western experts describe as an internal purge to shore up his power. Beyond the financial, Gregory Copley, president of the International Strategic Studies Association, points to another factor. The CIA, for example, always used to undertake psychological profiles of adversary and even allied leaders. Uh, and we're not seeing much attention being paid to that in the current intelligence framework. Current intelligence framework tends to focus on technically collected means, in other words, uh, electronic eavesdropping and the like. Why haven't economic and social and psychological profiles of the key CCP leaders uh, been available for lawmakers in the United States and, for that matter, for public distribution. I believe that there's been a great sensitivity toward upsetting the People's Republic of China's leadership within the CCP. And it's possible that the CCP could have similar information about U.S. policymakers that they could release, and they would almost certainly release that information the House measure would also extend a six-month deadline for public testimony. NTD News, New York. On June 4, 1989, the Chinese regime deployed its military to suppress a pro-democracy protest, killing anywhere from hundreds to tens of thousands, many of them students. In a moment of bipartisanship on Capitol Hill Tuesday, lawmakers gathered to commemorate this infamous day in history. NTD's Washington correspondent Jack Bradley has more from Capitol Hill. 
On the 35th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square Massacre, the House Select Committee was speaking out against the atrocities that were happening in China back in 1989 and that are still occurring today. Human rights have eroded in China when you consider Hong Kong was promised to be uh, two systems, one country. That has not occurred. We need to remember, but we need to act. And acting means, for instance, bringing it up and every conversation and dialogue that we have with the CCP. They surveil their, their citizens like no other nation. Uh, their citizens are petrified to speak their mind because they can be wished away at any time. They're afraid of basic human rights, the aspirations that all humans share, that Americans share, but the Chinese people do too. And uh, I think someday the Chinese Communist Party <clears throat> is going to have a serious reckoning with the Chinese people. The Tiananmen Square massacre was when over one million people, many of them students, protested in Beijing in 1989. They were speaking out against the CCP's corruption, economic mismanagement, nepotism, and poor career prospects for students. After weeks of protests, the Chinese regime dispatched soldiers and tanks to crush the demonstrations. The footage of Tank Man, a lone protester standing in front of a line of tanks, has become one of the most iconic symbols of the 20th century. The regime's human rights abuses continue to this day, with the persecution of Falun Gong, the Uyghurs, and the Tibetans. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said in a statement on Tuesday, quote, We remember the tens of thousands of peaceful Chinese pro-democracy protesters who were brutally assaulted for standing up for freedom, human rights, and an end to corruption. We also honor the many voices now silenced throughout the country, including in Xinjiang, Tibet, and Hong Kong. Congressman Andy Barr just visited Taiwan last week with several lawmakers to congratulate Taiwan's new president and reaffirm U.S. support. This harassment of a free and democratic island is more evidence that what happened in 1989 is even worse today. Human rights groups and witnesses estimate the death toll of the Tiananmen Square massacre to be up to several thousand, and it's one of the most censored topics in China to this day. Reporting from Washington, D.C., Jack Bradley, NTD News. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.